In no particular order, here are sports records that'll probably never be broken. Number 9. Barry Bonds' Intentional Walks Record At the height of his career, no one wanted to pitch to Barry Bonds. If he wasn't hitting homers, he was being pitched around. Barry Bonds, during his athletic peak, was just making arguably one of the toughest things to do in all of sports look like child's play which is crushing 95 mile per hour fastballs into the upper deck. During his career, Bonds was issued an intentional walk a staggering 668 times. As a point of reference, the next two players with the most are Albert Pujols with 302 and Hank Aaron with 293. Bonds has more than the both of them combined. Hank Aaron is the man who Bonds passed to capture the home run record in case anybody forgot. Not surprisingly, Bonds is also the all-time leader in walks with 2,558. In 2004, he was intentionally walked 120 times. Obviously, that's a single-season record, as most guys don't even draw that many in their whole career. Bonds led the majors in on-base percentage that year at a whopping 609. That means that he reached base more than half of the time when he stepped into the batter's box. If you aren't a big baseball nerd, just know that that's basically just absolutely amazing. Number 8. Wilt Chamberlain's 100 Points March 2nd, 1962. There were no video cameras. There wasn't even much of a crowd. At Hershey Sports Arena in Pennsylvania, Wilt Chamberlain scored a completely ridiculous 100 points to help the Philadelphia Warriors beat the New York Knicks 169-147. to 147. Even though the NBA wasn't a big deal back then, Chamberlain had already made a name for himself in the league. In his third year in the league, he had already broken the previous scoring record of 71 in a game when he amassed 78 points. Standing at just a little over 7 feet tall, he was able to dominate opponents as there was only a handful of players his size in the league. By all accounts, the game was pretty bizarre. While there's no video footage of the game, reports indicate that by the fourth quarter, when he already had 69 points, his teammates began passing the ball to him every time they went down the court. Aware that history was about to be made, the crowd was going completely crazy. The Knicks would hold the ball when they got it, just to stop him from scoring. But then, the Warriors would just foul to get the ball back. PA announcer Dave Zink would announce Chamberlain's point total every time he scored to keep the crowd riled up. Apparently, it was pretty lit. With 46 seconds left, Chamberlain had 98 points. After missing two shots, his teammates kept getting the rebounds. As five Knicks swarmed Chamberlain, he managed to break away and hit a layup, and that's when fans stormed the court. Even though the game by the end started to be a complete spectacle, 100 points in a game done in any fashion is still absolutely ridiculous. Since then, no one has managed to replicate this feat. Kobe Bryant once scored 81 points in 2006, but that's as close as anyone's ever come. Not even MJ was able to come close to that record. It's probably going to take someone as skilled as Shaq standing 8 feet tall to break this ridiculous record. Number 7. Barry Bonds Home Runs Let's just go ahead and get this out of the way. Given the connection between Barry Bonds and steroids, many people argue there should probably be an asterisk beside all of his statistics. But then again, does steroids really help the hand-eye coordination? Anyways, in 2001, Barry Bonds hit an unbelievable 73 home runs in only 476 at-bats, which is an all-time record. His record broke the previous record set by Mark McGuire in 1998 when he hit 70 homers. Of course, that record is also questionable, since McGuire later admitted to using steroids. A lot of people want to go all the way back to 1961 when Roger Maris hit 61 homers to break Babe Ruth's record of 60 in a season. Depending on where you fall on the issue, it really doesn't matter. 73 home runs, steroids or not, is most likely just not going to happen again. Designer steroids just continually get better, and tests can be beaten. Barry Bonds was just born to hit a baseball. In 2007, Bonds hit his 756th career home run to surpass Hank Aaron as the all-time home run leader. Aaron, who surpassed Babe Ruth's 714 home runs in 1974, was never believed to have taken steroids during his career, and many people still refer to him as the true home run king with 755. 
Vaughn still officially holds the all-time record for homers in a single season and for a career. With impressive speed, power, and defensive ability, Bonds was consistently among the best before his alleged steroid use began. Anyways, with the rates that balls are leaving the park these days, it doesn't look like anyone would even come near these records anytime soon. Unfortunately for Barry Bonds, it looks like we can say the same thing about his Hall of Fame candidacy because those old baseball writers who vote on these things seem pretty fucking stuffy. Number 6. Pete Rose Career Hits Pete Rose owns a number of records in Major League Baseball. The most impressive of them all is his hits record. He hit a ridiculous 4,256 hits. To put the hits record in perspective, for a player to sniff at that record, he'd have to basically average 200 hits a season for 21 years. So, what are numbers for the leader in hits in the Major Leagues for the last five seasons? 203, 205, 184, 199, and 194. Basically, just be the league leader in hits for 21 straight years and the record might happen. That's how insane this record is. As one of the most versatile players of all time, Charlie Hustle appeared in 17 All-Star games at five different positions, another feat that can only he can claim. He also made more outs than anyone ever with 10,328, though I guess he probably isn't as proud of that achievement. One reason it's hard to imagine anyone breaking his records is longevity. Not only did he play for 24 seasons, he played an average of 149 games per year, and in many cases, he played in the full season, which is 162 games for those of you not too familiar with baseball. Now, you'd think, given all of his personal accolades, and given that he was part of the Big Red Machine during the 70s that won two World Series, he'd be a member of the Hall of Fame. Well, unfortunately, Rose had a gambling problem, and as the manager of the Reds, he was caught betting on baseball. He has since been banned from the game, and his ineligibility remains a contentious topic. Number 5. Cal Ripken Jr. The Streak he was called the Iron Man for a reason. Starting in 1982, Cal Ripken Jr. played in 2,632 consecutive Major League Baseball games. His impressive streak came to an end on September 20, 1998. While the Baltimore Orioles, the team Ripken played for his entire career, hosted the New York Yankees, Ripken decided to sit the game out to end the streak on his own terms. When fans noticed he wasn't in the game, he received a standing ovation including fans from the Yankees. Ripken says that the closest he ever came to not playing during his streak was the day after he twisted his knee during a bench-clearing brawl against the Seattle Mariners in June 1993. Another close call was the 1994 player strike that threatened to stop Ripken's streak. As most baseball owners plan to use replacement players, Baltimore owner Peter Angelos announced that the Orioles would rather not feel the team than see Ripken's streak snapped. His record of consecutive games played broke the record previously held by Lou Gehrig, the other Iron Man, who played 2,130 consecutive games. Gehrig's record stood for 56 years, and many people thought it would never be broken. Now people are saying the same thing about Ripken's record, and maybe this time they might be right. Since then, the closest anyone has come to the record is Prince Fielder, who played in 547 games in a row from 2010 until 2014. I wouldn't exactly call that close. Number 4. Cy Young Wins When there's an award named after someone, you know that person has to be pretty good. Each year, Major League Baseball awards the Cy Young Award to the best pitcher in each of the National and American Leagues. When Cy Young was born in 1867, just two years after the Civil War, baseball was hardly a thing. But by 1890, when he made his Major League debut for the Cleveland Spiders, professional baseball had been in full swing for 14 years. Young would go on to become one of the game's first superstars, and he amassed a record of 511 career wins, 94 more than Walter Johnson, who was second on the career wins list. In 22 seasons in the majors, Young was a starting pitcher in a ridiculous 815 games, also a Major League record. He pitched 749 complete games, which is, you guessed it, a record as well. These days, teams tend to manage their pitchers' pitch count to avoid injury. 
Since kids play baseball year-round and wear their arms out before they even get to the pros, they tend to miss more time due to injury and are often allowed to pitch fewer innings, which reduces the likelihood of picking up as many wins. Even though there are plenty of amazing pitchers still in the game, the days of a workhorse pitcher are long gone. It's unlikely that the 511 wins will ever be broken, as 20 wins in a season puts a pitcher close to being the top pitcher in the league. This record is here to stay, thanks to baseball changing the way it treats pitchers, but it's totally fitting. Come on. Number 3. UCLA NCAA Basketball Championships The UCLA men's basketball team has a record 11 national titles, including a stretch between 1967 and 1973 when they won seven in a row. As a point of reference, Kentucky, the second best team, has only won eight total. So, while the University of Kentucky might have a total of 11 championship banners up in the rafters, seven in a row is untouchable in today's times. It's just an impossible feat with college players going to the NBA as early as possible, and with the disparity between college teams being much smaller today than back in the 60s and 70s. Beyond just winning 11 national titles, UCLA was THE team in the 60s and 70s. Under coach John Wooden, UCLA won an incredible 10 national championships in 12 seasons. They went undefeated four times and won 13 consecutive regular season titles, a feat only matched by Kansas. The UCLA program has had many legendary players go through it. Old school stars Bill Walton, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Reggie Miller, as well as current stars such as Kevin Love and Russell Westbrook were all Bruins at some point. Granted, while many teams have had more success in recent years, it's hard to imagine that in the one-and-done era that a college team can win seven consecutive NCAA championships. Number 2. Byron Nelson – Consecutive PGA Wins Byron Nelson had quite the season back in 1945. On route to having one of the best years any athlete has ever had, Nelson won 11 consecutive PGA tournaments. In fact, he won 18 total that season, which is also a record. Not even Jack Nicklaus or Tiger Woods have ever been able to match that. While some have noted that the country was at war in 1945 and that may have weakened the PGA field, other stars of the era such as Ben Hogan and Sam Snead were still playing, so I'd say the field was still extremely talented. Plus, Nelson finished in the top 20 of 113 consecutive tournaments, another feat that's been unmatched. Nelson had been inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame and received the PGA Lifetime Achievement Award in 1997. In reference to what's considered the best year anyone has ever had on the PGA Tour, Arnold Palmer once said, I don't think that anyone will ever exceed the things that Byron did by winning 11 tournaments in a row in one year. Hey, now he just needs a drink named after him and his legacy will be complete. Number 1. Wayne Gretzky Points Known as the Great One, Wayne Gretzky holds 60 NHL records. Is that a record? Among his records are points scored in a single season and all-time points scored. During the 1985-86 regular season, Gretzky tallied 215 points on 52 goals and 163 assists. In the previous season, he amassed 255 points during the regular season and the playoffs. His career 2,857 points is also a record that's never going to be touched with 894 goals and 1,963 assists. Take a second to absorb all of that because I still have more records to rattle off. He has the most goals of all time with 849. He has the most assists of all time with 1963. During the 1981-82 season, he scored 92 goals. That's the best all time. In the 82 to 84 seasons, he scored 100, including the playoffs. Also, a record. We mentioned his legendary 85 86 season where he set the record for points in a season. It's also worth noting that his 163 assists is, you guessed it, a record. As a little cherry on top, he has 50 career hat trick, another unmatched tally. Just to put things in perspective, the league leader in points nowadays is routinely right around 100 points. Good luck to whomever wants to lead the league in points for around 29 seasons to break the points record, or whatever other records Gretzky has set. 
What he lacked in speed and size, he made up for with his in-depth knowledge of the game. Here's what's next. Cristiano Ronaldo is often described as one of the best soccer players of all time. He's been awarded the FIFA Player of the Year award three times and has scored more than 500 goals in his lifetime. As of April 2017, he plays for the soccer club Real Madrid from Spain and is the captain of Portugal's national team. 